It is truly later than we think. The apocalypse is now. And how tragic it is to see Christians, and above all, Orthodox young people, with this incalculable tragedy hanging over their heads, who think they can continue what is called a normal life in these terrible times, participating fully in the whims of this silly, self-worshipping generation, totally unaware that the fool's paradise we're living in is about to crash and completely unprepared for the desperate times that lie just ahead of us. There is no longer even a question of being a good or a poor Orthodox Christian. The question now is, will our faith survive at all? With many, it will not survive. The coming Antichrist will be too attractive, too much in the spirit of the worldly things we now crave, for most men even to know that they have lost their Christianity without doubt to him. Still, the call of Christ comes to us. Let us, after becoming aware of these things, begin at last to pay attention to the clearest expression of this call today is coming from the enslaved atheist world, where there is real suffering for Christ, the seriousness of life which, is, which we are rapidly losing and have already lost. One Orthodox priest in Romania, Father George Calcio, who is now near death in the communist prison, for daring to challenge young seminarians and students to put off their blind allegiance to the spiritual times and come forward to labor for Christ, he gave a series of talks in 1978, for which he received a sentence of 10 years concentration camp. Seven talks addressed to young people. Because he speaks to people who have been raised as atheists. So the situation is a little more drastic than we have here. The basic battle is the same. After speaking of the emptiness of atheism, he tells today's young people, quote, I call you to a much higher flight, to total abandonment, to an act of courage which defies reason. I call you to God, to the one that transcends the world, so that you might know an infinite heaven of spiritual joy, the heaven which you presently grope for in your personal hell, and which you seek even while in a state of non-deliberate revolt. Jesus has always loved you, but now you have the choice to respond to his invitation. In responding, you are ordained to go and bear fruit that will remain, to be a prophet of Christ in the world in which you live, to love your neighbor as yourself, and to make all men your friends, to proclaim by every action this unique and limitless love which has raised man from the level of a slave to that of a friend of God. To be the prophet of this liberating love which delivers you from all constraint, returning to you your integrity as you offer yourself to God. End of quote. Father George, speaking to young people who had little inspiration to serve Christ's church because they had accepted the worldly opinion, which is common also in the free world, that the church is only a set of buildings or a worldly organization, calls them and us to a deeper awareness of Christ's church and of how our formal membership in it, in it is not enough to save us. He says, quote, The church of Christ is alive and free. In her we move and have our being, through Christ who is her head. In him we have full freedom. In the church we learn of truth, and the truth will set us free. You are in Christ's church whenever you uplift someone bent down in sorrow or when you give alms to the poor and visit the sick. You are in Christ's church when you cry out, Lord, help me. You are in Christ's church when you are good and patient, when you refuse to get angry at your brother, even if he has wounded your feelings. You are in Christ's church when you pray, Lord, forgive him. When you work honestly at your job, returning home very in the evenings, but with a smile upon your lips. When you repay evil with love, you are in Christ's church. Do you not see, therefore, young friend, how close the church of Christ is? You are Peter, and God is building his church upon you. You are the rock of his church, against which nothing can prevail. Let us build churches with our faith, churches which no human power can pull down, a church whose foundation is Christ. Feel for your brother alongside you. Never ask, who is he? Rather say, he is no stranger. He is my brother. He is the church of Christ, just as I am. End of quote. With such a call in our hearts, let us begin really to belong to the church of Christ, the Orthodox Church. Outward membership is not enough. Something must move within us that makes us different from the world around us, even if that world calls itself Christian and even Orthodox. Let us keep and nourish those qualities of the true Orthodox worldview which I mentioned earlier. A living, normal attitude, loving and forgiving, not self-centered, preserving our innocence and unworldliness, even with a full and humble awareness of our own sinfulness and the power of the worldly temptations which surround us. If we truly live, this orthodox worldview, our faith will survive the shocks ahead of us and be a source of inspiration and salvation for those who will still be seeking Christ 
even amidst the shipwreck of humanity, which has already begun today.